I'm Brad Sloan, and the Maze What's Neat episode starts right now. The What's Neat Show is sponsored by Caboose, sharing our passion for trains since 1938. This is What's Neat for May 2020. I'm your host, Ken Patterson, and this month, as I always say, we've got a pretty good show. First of all, Campbell Rice comes by, and he shares with us progress on his layout, and he talks about, on this show, how to make roads and sidewalks. It's really interesting how he does it. It's very different from the methods that I've shown in the past using cement and or plexiglass. He actually shares with us a way to use paper products and it's very simple this month on how he shows us how to make roads. Also this month, Carlton Brown shares with us a really cool product that plays hand in hands with the operators. The guys that actually like to operate their layout and shift cars, have a schedule, a place to go. It's very, very intense when you get into an operating session. It's about three hours long with a lot of paperwork to go with it. But Carlton shares with us a great concept, a new product from his company, RFID tags. And these are tags that allow each freight car to be located on the layout specifically. It'll show up on the computer screen where they are, show what's in the load, what the commodity is, and makes operating that much more interesting. And finally, we share a great photo shoot that I had in the backyard the other day. It's two large scale engines from LGB, the Jupiter and the Union Pacific locomotive number 119. Both of these locomotives were in Promontory Summit at the closing and the meeting of the first railroad across the country. And these models in G-Scale were such a treat when I had them in my studio that I couldn't help but go outside, photograph them so I could share them with the What's Neat viewers. And so with that, let's continue on with the rest of May 2020, What's Neat. <laughs> For this segment of What's Neat, I'm standing with Carlton Brown. Now, you'll remember we talked with you, Carlton, in Kansas City at that NMRA National, That's and you right. were showing the RFDI tags. Did I say that right? RFID. RFID tags, which allowed us to locate trains around the layout. Back then, that was really hot. That exactly. was really neat. Yes. But now it looks like you've got the whole thing. You've got a game changer here. Absolutely. Tell me what this is all about. Well, one thing we're doing is we're using RFID to, with operations, JMRI operations, to kind of make things really fun for the folks who like to do operations. Okay. And so how we do that, and we'll kind of come over here, is we got a couple of screens that we have. First of all, we have our RFID tags that are underneath each of the cars that we have. Okay. And that looks like yeah. that, that little tag that you see right there. Right. And those just peel off and stick right underneath the trucks. And then as you have those underneath the trucks, and we have them on one of the cars here, you can actually roll over one of the readers. There's also a reader that we have right here, and this is just a little quick board. Okay. And it shows that a reader that is underneath the uh, train tracks. Here, nice. Right? And then on the other side of that, you have a Wi Fi module that actually talks to a Raspberry Pi, and that Raspberry Pi aggregates all the Wi Fi signals on the layout. Okay. Okay? Now we have JMRI 
that has been integrated into this system, into this platform, so we can actually use our RFID readers okay. with their operations uh, control software, and we just merged those together. We made JMRI look beautiful. That is beautiful. We already look beautiful, right? And so now we merged those together, and now what I'm going to do is I have, I can pull a JMRI manifest either from my cell phone, I can pull it from a tablet, and I can get the manifest, and as I get the manifest up from our board here, I'll have the manifest and I'll know where to drop cars off at. Now at this point in time, it's asking me to drop these, my manifest is telling me to drop my Burlington Northern and this UP car off at this location. And so I am going to go ahead and roll those in to the location here. And as I roll those in, you're going to see the tags that are underneath the car will go ahead and get identified. And what will what it'll, what'll happen is once it goes over, you'll see the light pop on and pop on. That's I for do, demonstration that. yes. uh, purposes. As those go over, it's going to read those cars and those cars are going to show up on the display over here, as you see right down here. So these cars will show up. It'll tell you the car type, the car name. It'll tell you when it went over it, the time it went over it, and the destination of those cars. And then over here, it shows you each one of your trains that you have, all of the information on it, and it tells you all the cars that are associated with that train. Wow. And as it goes over to its destination point, a, a green check mark will say that you have, you know, put those cars in the location and you can move on to the next job now. So are you saying that this replaces car cards and all that handwritten paperwork? Absolutely, that's what it does. It automates all that and the thing that we did is an end-to-end -end turnkey solution so we make it very easy for the user. What happens is the Raspberry Pi, there's one thing that they have to do. We pre-configure the Wi-Fi modules, we pre-configure the Raspberry Pi. The only thing they have to do is put the ethernet cable to the home router and it's up and working. This is awesome. This is just like the real railroads the way it looks to me. This is so clear and looks like it's very easy to follow. Tell me what website would all the viewers of What's Neat go to to see the price points and to be able to order this great system from you? www.traintracks.com. That's T-R-A-X-X -X for tracks. That's awesome. And I understand one of the fine gentlemen that works with you in this company lives in St. Louis. I want to get him on the podcast and get him go. and Daniel hooked up together. And let's see how this gets installed into our layout sometime. That would make a great segment. Perfect. We're going to do that. All Man, right. And thank you so much for sharing this with the viewers of What's Neat. All right. You're welcome. Thanks a lot, Ken. <laughs> For this segment of What's Neat, I've got some beautiful G-scale locomotives from LGB today. This is something really special that I'm shooting in the backyard. I'm doing another outdoor photo shoot on this beautiful, warm, I want to call it a spring day. Check this out. These models are absolutely exquisite. This is the Jupiter and the Union Pacific 119. I'm recreating that promontory Utah shot where they had put these two locomotives and laid the golden spike on the transcontinental railroad in the United States. And LGB has represented these models absolutely beautiful. There's not a piece of plastic in these models. Both of these models together come in a beautiful box. A wooden crate weighs around 50 pounds. These models are made of metal and brass and have been measured to the prototypes. It's absolutely amazing the work that LGB did on these models that I am photographing today in the backyard. I set up a 
large scale scene using about code 150 rail hand laid and a body of water to get some reflection shots. I did some individual shots of these locomotives. I will show you now the individual shots of the Jupiter. Just an absolutely beautiful shot. Lots of reflection for this photograph. And then again, I shot the number 119, the Union Pacific locomotive, using a reflector, setting them up on the track and just letting the sun lick all the beautiful detail that's on this model. When these models run, they smoke. Smoke comes out of the whistle and the steam cocks down here it's just absolutely amazing I shot interior shots of these locomotives inside each cab here's the blue one and then of course the Union Pacific the details different in both they're absolutely beautiful they run fantastic they run smooth we ran them on a test piece of track inside about an eight foot piece of track so it's not something that I get every day but this one's really special and I wanted to share it to the viewers on what's neat before I have to send these back uh, in the next 24 hours so check it out they're available online from LGB and or at your dealer and that's this segment for what's neat On this What's Neat, we're talking roads. A lot of you out there have asked how I make my roads. And I do several different ways. I use some products available over the counter, and I use some other not so known products. So let's start off by talking what products are, are available. A lot of people will use this that they can get from their local hardware store. Uh, you just paint it on there and let it dry, smooth it, and then color it. Or there's other things available like this AK Terrain's Asphalt. And the good old standby, the Woodland Scenics, smooth it, and their pave paving tape. I've seen some people that use a foam or some that also use a foam core board, such as this black foam core board here that you can also purchase at a, a hobby center. And I use a mixture, I've used all of them, and I actually prefer to use this. And what is this? This is actually watercolor paper. Uh, you can get this at most hobby centers, and actually it makes for a great road. One thing about using paper is, a lot of papers, they will curl up when they get paint or wet on them, but this is made to take it so it won't do it. It is a, a fairly thick uh, paper, and, and you can get this notebook in several different sizes. And if you look, it's actually got a rough texture to it. And so uh, what, what I'm going to do today is show you how I make my roads out of this. Now this right here road was made with this paper. And basically what I did is I stuck it on the back of a piece of cork. But you don't have to do that. You can place it straight down on the road. So let's start off <clears throat> by looking at roads. What are the widths? What are the colors? Uh, here's a picture I took of a road in my backyard. And you can see I measured it from side to side, not including the gutters. It was 21 feet wide. In this road, this close-up picture, you can see all different colors. You can see whites, browns, and blacks. So what is pavement exactly? Well. Pavement is a mixture of, a, of uh, asphalt, cement, and aggregate. Now these aggregates can vary from location to location depending on where you're located in, the, in, in the, around the world actually. Uh, some areas I've seen use recycled glass actually in part of their aggregate. And, um, but in most places it's a small type rock. So when it's heated and mixed together with this cement, and then uh, put down on the road hot and then tamped, it becomes a real hard surface. Now, uh, asphalt is basically, uh, cement is actually only 5% asphalt cement and 95% aggregate. So what we're gonna do is um, basically, I'm gonna show you how I do my roads. Like I said, I measured the one outside. This, this one here that I did is actually about 25 feet wide. Uh, scale. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take 
this watercolor paper and show you how it would make a road. Just basic small road. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rip a sheet of this out. And, and like I said, you can get this in bigger sizes. A lot of my downtown roads are made out of this. And some of my other roads out in the country uh, I did with the uh, Woodland Scenic Smooth, smooth It and Paving Tape. Okay, so there's our paper. You can see it's, it's quite thick and heavy duty. Uh, first off, I'm going to start off, I'm going to cut this little rough edge off up at the top. So we'll take my rule, go across there in an X-Acto knife, and I'll cut here. So that it'll cut all the way through. So now I'll take it, I'm going to mark. Let's do, I'm going to mark 28. I like that width. The top. And I'm going to mark it at the bottom as well. Joe scale 28. Right. I'm going to lay this out. Take this dull knife. Make sure you don't want to move your ruler or you'll pretty much have to start it all over again. All right, there we go. That's separated. Now, this will be my base road. Now, if you had curves or whatever, uh, the best thing to do is just take you a, I take a piece of cardboard and I stick two pins down in it and measure the distance apart and drag it to however you want to go. But for ease right now, I'm just going to do another section like this. And basically you can see that's, that's basically our route. I'm going to start by giving a base of flat gray primer. This is what, um, what I'll start out with. So here we go. Just give it a good coat. Make sure you cover up all the white. All right. Now that once our base coat has dried, I'm going to take several different other colors. This is a, um, uh, not sure exactly what colors, ivory bisque. And basically what I want to do is I want to take it and I want to get away from it and sort of let it fall, dry fall on top of the on top of the road rather than getting up close. So from a distance, basically I'm gonna come back in like this. It doesn't take much, just a little, just like that. All right. Then I'm gonna take this other here. It's a little bit darker, you can kind of see. As you saw on our roads, there were many different colors of white and tans and browns. So, do the same thing with this one. I'm going to take it back and I'm going to just kind of give it a little coat, a little squirt, just like that. All right. A white, because there was lots of white in it. Same deal. Can I get back and just let it kind of dry fall on top of it? Just like that. All right. And then I've got a brown. And it doesn't matter whether these are gloss or flat. Typically it's not enough to show up the difference. Right. Then I'm going to just kind of do the same thing. A little, little hint of brown. Okay, so that's basically our base road there. Now that our piece is dried, I'm going to move on to the next step. What I do is I take 91% alcohol and a small rag, old cut up shirt here, and basically just dab some on there, get it. And now I'm gonna go down each side of the, of the, of the road here and it'll give it, you kinda have to put some muscles in here, 
it'll sort of give it that weathered look. All right. And the other side. A little too much alcohol. I'm gonna do the same thing. Run up and down, just like this right here, just using my finger, giving some pretty firm pressure. And if you do this and you don't like it, you, you can always go back over and paint and start it again. There's no real science behind this. Okay, now we're going to let that dry good, and we'll go on to the easy part. Now that we're ready to apply the stripes on our sample. So there's a couple different ways you can go about doing that. Uh, there's a company called Highways and Byways that makes a nice little kit that you can get that has individual peel and stick lines of yellow and white. And they also have all the railroad crossings and turn lanes and everything like that. I, I do use the graphics and, and then some of the white and yellow peel on stripes as well but if you're doing a long section what you may want to do is you can go to a hobby center and actually get some of this tape here they have this available in yellow and white as well so that you can you can mark it uh, another way that you can do that is is by painting the lines on uh, it takes a little more time to, to mask it out and cover up everything and do your lines but that that is also uh, an option to do as well so we're going to take, I'm going to take some of this yellow here on the center stripe just to kind of show you how it goes down. And basically you're going to peel and stick it. And then we're going to take both ends and I'm going to lay it down each side of the black stripe mark that is. We're almost right up on it, okay, and then put it down. Okay. Then I'm going to cut, cut that in there, and then I'm going to come back, and you could do dotted lines, or you could do a double, however you want. So I'm going to do, I'm going to make this a double. So I'm going to start up here next to it. I'm going to come in right beside it. Real close. So I'm going to say I'm going to make this about the width of a HO scale car tire. Just to kind of use for reference. All right. That's pretty good. All right. On the sides, I'll use some of the highways and byways so that you can see how that works. And it's basically on a sheet and you take your hobby knife. Now they have uh, short lines for the dotted lines or they have the long lines for like the side of the road. So basically you're gonna take your knife, get up underneath it here. Just one please. Okay. All right. Now I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna come in just a hair bit inside the edge. All right, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna leave about a car tire's width on that outside. Now, if you were doing a city road and you wanted curbs and, and gutters and things, you could come back in over the top of that with some tape and paint this more of a concrete color to kind of give it the appearance of um, a gutter. I'm gonna take another one here. And now the hard part here is lining them up. And I'll start, might overlap it just a tad bit. And slip 
clipped off the other end. So, wind up there. And then down here. Okay. Cut it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this short section back on my sheet to save it for another time if I need another one. Okay. Take and do the same thing here on the other side. Apply it. Start up here. Just like that. Okay. I'll take another one. certainly see that if you're working a large road if you actually have the tape it might work a little easier so you're not having to piece together so many sections but it's all good okay just like that put this back over here all right. So that's my basic road. Now, we'll come back. And what I like to use are pan pastels, of course, and give it that weathered look. So I'm going to come through with some, well, some darker dirts. And you can kind of come around like this here. Just to kind of give it a little bit of weathered look. I'll kind of go over the striping as well. Okay, so I selected not the best brush for this. Okay, so let's say we're gonna put some graphics down. Um, in fact, let's let's just do a uh, let's do this school zone. So I'm going to take my rule. I'm going to cut out the school zone just like this. Trim off this excess here a little bit, trying to get the lettering centered so that it goes so we can center a little bit better. So all you have to do on this, say we're gonna put let's just put this right here. So you're gonna peel it and it's gonna come off just like that. Alright, then you're going to basically stick it right in the center. That looks good there. Cross it. Then we'll make sure it is sealed down real good. Okay. And then I'm going to take the corner. Instead of pulling up, I'm going to kind of roll it back, roll my finger back, just like this here. And comes off. You're pushing down so it's not going to come off with you. So that's the school zone. Now, I can take some more uh, weathering, different colors, I can put down through here. I'll also use this real fine brush that you can see doesn't have much to it, um, but it allows me to get down the edges real good. So I'll kind of go down the edges with this, just like this, okay. It's always dirtier on the side of the road.
you know, just all the way down. It's no, uh, this is uh, no right or wrong way here at all. Okay. Now I'm gonna take a little bit of, actually I'm gonna take a little bit of black, kinda go down through here. As cars tend to drip a little bit of black oil on the roadway. Okay, there we go. Now one thing you see in a lot of roads is you see uh, pavement cracks. You see where they've come back in with tar and tried to patch it so the water didn't get down underneath the pavement and freeze and create the potholes. So what I do is I take this, it's a jelly roll, it, and it's a, the tip is a fine tip. And uh, so what I'll do is I'll just take and make, make some uh, crack lines out of it. Just real light lines. And typically, they're gonna branch off like roots, these are. And they typically go, now they can go both wet directions, but typically it's it's heavy loads of cracked asphalt or whatever, and uh, caused it to do that. And you just you can just do these all over, just any kind of random way that you want to do them. And it'll just typically just add a little more realism into your photo. You don't have to get real carried away. You want to be sure you use a fine tip. You don't want something real fat so that's not not in scale. Usually these lines are very small. Okay, so I've put some several lines on there. I don't know how they well they show up on the camera, but they do make a big difference in real life. So that's our road. And that's kind of more of a country road, but let's say what if you want to do a city road with sidewalks. Well, I went to the Hobby Center, I bought this basswood. It's, it's a little bit heavier duty than, than uh, balsa wood. And uh, this was already the width, which is about typical for a sidewalk. Uh, so what I can do is, I can lay this down here on top of it, just like that, and then come across with my uh, my road. Okay, so I'm going to take my, my basswood here and I've already cut an angle and kind of sanded it down. And uh, this, this will basically give me my curve for my sidewalk as well. So, now what I like to do is take a little bit of Mod Podge here and I like to go over the top of it with the Mod Podge first. Just give it a good coating, just like this here. And what this does, it what it'll help the paint adhere to the wood rather than soak in, and also it'll it'll give it that non-wood look, so you won't get the wood textures. So take this section here, I'm gonna coat it as well. Okay. Now that my Mod Podge is dried, I'm ready to go ahead and give it some paint. So, what I'm going to do is take a little bit of this. I got two colors here, a little bit different. Just kind of give it a, a quick little spray here. All right. And then I'm going to take the darker here. Just kind of over that. Not too much. And kind of give it that uh, sort of that concrete look. Now we'll let this point, at this point we'll let this dry. Now that our wood has dried, I'm going to go ahead and take my knife and my rule and I'm going to basically, I'm going to mark all the joints. I'm basically making it the width of the ruler, just 
I'm just going to score right across the top of it lightly, just like this, and continue on. This just gives it the looks, appearance of the expansion joints inside of the uh, sidewall. side piece that I'm going to do right here okay now that those are done I want to come back over it with just a little bit of weathering Not anything really too harsh. Um, just going to kind of do a little dirt here, and uh, it'll just fall into these cracks that I made. Just kind of highlighting, highlighting those cracks. my paint is still a bit damp so I should have waited till this dried but for the sake of showing you guys and taking time it does take a while to do these videos so so this is what I come up with here so if I were to take my road let's say for example here I'm going to lie this out and this would be the curb on that end and then for example just like that so that that can be your downtown area another option you can buy these these are commercially available uh, these are sidewalks and you can see these are the these are the weathered so they have like the cracks in them and they're just basically plaster and you can put these down and uh, they as well come with uh, corners as part of the kit so if you get it right so it goes across somewhat like that so that's our road there So I hope you enjoyed this section on what's neat and learned something a little bit about roads, some of the ways to make them and some of the way that I do mine. And that is what's neat. All of the model railroad products seen in this episode of What's Neat are available through Caboose in Lakewood, Colorado or order online at mycaboose.com.